What I'm doing here is um, trying to get an even density of depth on the thatch because what I don't want it to do actually is gully out. And what we mean by gullying out, if you have a, a thinner part of thatch and then a denser part, you'll find that the thinner part will actually wear quicker. This overhang is quite important to actually shed the water away from the stonework of the building. The more even you get this, the better water flow you're going to get away. On, on. Blackthorn finally yeah. makes it up the hill. But the big question now is, how many more trips will she need to make? How's that, Keith? How many more loads, then, will we need? Like that. Another four to finish this, seven, eight, about another ten. You really know how to cheer somebody up, don't you? This horse now hates you. <laughs> she doesn't. Helping Keith with the cowshed roof is John Letts, an archaeologist who's been studying ancient thatching for decades. This bracken is going to be the permanent base coat that goes onto the thatched roof. Thatch is really made of these two layers, a permanent base coat that's never replaced, so it's always sheltered from the elements, and then a weathering coat of another material over the top. And bracken is a very unusual material to use. Um, it's certainly not been used for a century, century and a half at least. You can look at it archaeologically, you can, you can read about it, but actually doing it is something slightly different. It's full of thorns, full of spores, I'll be coughing all night. Um, and that's certainly not recorded. Okay. Keith. Keith, you want me up there? Yeah, I'll just secure this, John, and then you can come on up. <coughs> Ouch. It's uncertain how well the bracken is going to work as the thatch undercoat. It's an experiment even for our two expert thatchers. Now, this is the first time I've actually worked on a bracken base coat. It's, it's certainly different with one or two concerns about this being a little bit green and the shrinkage. I think the chances are it would have been dried out before it was put on. But that's part of the experiment here. I mean, we, you know, how long is it going to take for this green bracket to actually dry? How much it is going to shrink? Because if we then put a surface coat of weathering straw over it and the base coat that it's fixed into shrinks, it'll let go of these fixings that are holding that surface on and the surface should slip off. And we don't mm. want to get into that situation. While John compacts the bracken, Keith has to tie every bundle onto the roof using a thatcher's two-foot-long needle. And this is the fun bit. I've got to stuff my arm through the, the base layer. I've got the rafter now with my left hand, and I just find my hand with the end of the needle. I've removed the flax now, pull the needle back out, and then dislocate back through th this side of the rafter. Back up again into the needle eye, back through, and there should be the end of the string. There it is. And then I will actually do a, a tie with a horizontal piece of hazel. I force that into the base coat I've already created here. Goes in a fair way. And then I'll actually just do a single knot this end. And as I tug this, it will pull that tight. You can see where that's pulling that end now. To even it up, you need to get a bit of weight on here. And you just literally give it a bash. And you see how it's compacting the bracken really tightly creating a nice firm base. Alex and Fonz's wattle and daub wall is now down to the very finishing touches. It has taken three days of work. Right, I've, I've finished. This, finished. This is finished, yeah. Yeah, all the cracks, I'm pretty much happy with everything in there. This is near perfection, as we're oh, going to get. That's excellent. A genuine 17th century wall, all made from materials on the farm. So we've got the hazel, the cow shit and all the clay. And, this, and of course the chaff, yeah, the straw. Yeah. It's done. It Brilliant. is. You happy? I'm, I'm happy, yeah. I'm going to be happy when I get the shit off my hands. Yeah, come on, let's go and wash our hands. <laughs> With the cow shed's front wall finished, all that remains is the roof. Professional thatcher Keith Paynes has returned to the farm to oversee its completion. The bracken undercoat that went on last month has held up well and is providing a good base for the weathering coat of straw now going on top. Okay, thanks, Alex. All right. Now, this is very dirty and messy because basically it's unprocessed. It is really the stubble left at the end of harvest because the most important thing was the, was the grain, the top end of the material. It's full of rubbish, it's full of all flare, leaf and flag. There's even a few ears in it, and because it's not been thrashed, there's all grain and everything in there. 
To clean the surface, it's this very crude comb which is made up of a piece of hazel split in the middle, some forged nails and then tied together. And it literally just pulls the leaf and the flag and any rubbish out of the coat surface. And not only that, it's also combing the material all in the same direction, so you actually get a better water flow off of the thatch. A team of professional thatchers would normally take two weeks to finish a cowshed like the one here in the valley. So far, it's taken our team of specialists six weeks under Keith's tuition. Right, we're now ready to fix the thatch onto the roof by using our hazel spars or pegs. And basically, these are then twisted. They have to be twisted and not bent, and that's the knack to it. You basically twist it into a hairpin. It's an incredibly difficult thing to start to learn, but once you've got the knack of it, you'll be twisting tree trunks. I'll find you an easy one, Alex. Easy one? Yeah. You start off with the, th the smaller uh, sticks because it's just technique, really. But if you've got a fat one, you'll end up never being able to do it. Okay. Try another, another little technique of doing it, some people, is double thumbs on the back of the bark yeah. and then pushing hands away from each other. Right. Go on. I've, I've, tried, I've, tried, I've tried quite a few of these and I keep breaking them and I'm worried that I'm just going to end up breaking them all. But how many have I... How yeah. many have I got to do, Keith? You'll be looking at about 3,000 by the time I finish this room. 3,000? <laughs> yeah, about 3,000. Don't bend. No, no, I'm twisting, twisting. This is really hard work. This is... I can't... I mean, it's just not budging. 3,000. <laughs> And relax. <laughs> Red. Red raw. Cheers, Keith. Rub it in. The stubble weed is compacting down well onto the roof. Combined with the bracken undercoat, there will be some 18 inches of thatch protecting the cowshed. So we're just putting the finishing touches on now. This is literally the last rod that's got to go on. These are the external fixing for the stubble thatch. There's several of them running across now, about every eight inches. So we've got two spars to put in now. These have got to go in uphill so the water doesn't course down them. So can we have the last spar, Alex? There we go. Marvellous. Perfectly twisted. I hope I never have to twist another spar as long as I live. <laughs> in we go. Last one going in, nicely uphill. Find the holdings. It's quite a nice bit of bite when you drive them in. In with your hand, yep. nicely firm. Excellent. And we're done. <laughs> okay. It's the moment of truth. Well, the moment of truth will be when it rains, but I just want to see what it looks like. Crowning sense of achievement. I think we just need to stand back a bit, make sure the rods are where we want them, and... Uh, yeah. Good one. It really is not going to need any major work, I hope, for probably six, seven years. It's certainly many centuries since people actually process cereal crops with the stubble left in the field, so they cut for thatching. But to actually work with it, it's been quite amazing. I've surprised myself with how, how much of my modern skill really is still associated with three, four, five hundred years ago. This is, this is the first time I've, um, I've done any thatching at all and um, obviously starting off with the bracken, the bracken coat, I did um, half of the barn with the, the gads and tying it down and making sure it was all compact enough. And the roof has turned out ten times better than I thought it would. I thought it'd look a bit shaggy, a bit untidy, but it's really firm and compact. I think we've got as close to a, a Tudor-style uh, cow shed as we possibly could. I, mean, I know it's our interpretation of it, but this is... Well, I think this is damn close. I feel like I've really achieved something and, and really, really enjoyed it, has to be said. I, I hope all jobs on the farm are going to be like that because... I certainly now, you know, if I get a, a building, I'm going to be thatching it. I'll rip off the tile roof and, <laughs> and throw some thatch on it because it's just... It's such a great thing to do, though. It's such a, you know, a great job to have as well, so... It's going to be a good idea. Excellent. We can gloat tomorrow. <laughs>